Welcome back to Five Acres Honey Farm. I'm Tara Lynn, and if you are a new follower, because uh, I've got a new, a lot of new followers lately, um, welcome. And uh, if you're just visiting for the first time, I feel like today's video is a great example of the, the menagerie that's here um, and the hodgepodge of, of everything in my day-to-day -day life. Um, today's video, I'm going to show you a little bit of what um, the pigs eat in a day. We are raising um, some Idaho pasture pigs and we have them for just a few more weeks. This is our first time uh, raising them. So I have some earlier videos um, of our first um, day and our first few weeks with the pigs and how we prepared for them. Uh, and I'll have some upcoming videos about um, if we're going to do this again and answer any questions folks have about that. Um, but I'm going to be showing you a little bit of what they eat in a day, um, especially now as the growing season is starting a little bit. Uh, and uh, I'm also going to jump in the hives. Um, the weather seems fairly favorable for hive inspection. Um, my last video, I went through all of my hives. I'm here um, in the Pittsburgh, North Carolina area and also out um, in the Western North Carolina area near Lake Fontana. So um, all of my hives have um, survived um, the cold. So I'm hoping we'll see um, you know, some, some more great pollen coming in. And I'll also be deciding if I want to split some colonies. This time last year, during this week, I split one of my hives and my mentor um, was, did not have high hopes for, for that um, queen being successful, um, but that hive actually um, is still going strong. And I've split that hive probably four times last year. Um, it's just a super prolific colony. And, uh, and so all of my um, colonies here are descendants of um, hers. So um, I'll be going through them to see if anybody looks like they're ready to be split. I have a feeling she will. Um, I have to double check. I know one of my queens out in the mountains, she is the oldest. She's like three or four years old. So I'm pretty sure this is gonna be her, her last um, spring. Um, the other things, I've got um, several new fun things to, to share with you before we head outside. Um, and then when we get outside, I also have some fun projects that I have going on. Um, but I'm gonna flip this around and just show you what I've been collecting in the kitchen and what and chat about a little bit about what I collect on a day-to-day -day basis that we give to the pigs. This probably looks super meager. This is just a banana peel. I made banana pancakes this morning. Last night after the pigs were fed, I um, had roasted some Brussels sprouts and I had removed some of the outer leaves that didn't look too good. So this is a fairly tiny bowl um, and I kind of made a brunch today so I didn't have two meals to kind of pick little scraps from. So this is just, you know, the ban bananas from our brunch time. Um, I do have eggshells um, that I could be giving them but, um, but I have heard like you don't want to give them too much of something so um, you know, I just give them eggshells a few times per week. Wow, that bowl looks really tiny. Um, usually, you know, if I'm making um, potatoes, sweet potatoes, any veggies and stuff, if I'm cutting off the, the ends of carrots, um, all of that just goes into a bowl. And um, our pigs, we feed them once per day. Um, that was actually advice that the farm where we got the pigs from, that's how she feeds her pigs. So that's what they were used to when they came here. And she has been raising pigs for a number of years, um, specifically the Idaho pasture. And uh, she said that this is actually, she's noticed better growth rates with them. It also allows them in the summertime when they get their meal in the, in the evening, it allows that digestion when their body heat's gonna go up to be at the coolest time of the day. And in the winter, feeding them in the evening, it allows them to build their body temperature as the nighttime is coming when they need to stay warm. So it really just fits into a logical time of the day. So throughout um, my daytime, I just collect whatever food scraps and bring that out. And, um, and they are on a, um, a non-GMO, um, soy-free, I would say quote unquote soy-free, and I'll explain why in a moment, um, regionally milled um, feed that we get at our local feed store here, Country Farm and Home. I can link to them um, in the description. And I say quote unquote um, soy-free, um, up until this past month, they were on a completely soy-free blend, um, but I believe there was some issue with the sourcing and the pricing, and so this custom blend was adjusted and um, so there is some soy in it now as they're getting finished. Um, 
I'm okay with that. Um, this is an experiment raising them and I feel really good that they didn't have soy for the majority of their life. So they're only getting it for the last um, about six weeks or so of their of their lives. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that for the options that we have, you know, make the best choices we can. A lot of people think that the pigs eat all of the, our leftovers and our food scraps. And I have to say majority of our food scraps, I, I mean, I'm fairly good with with cooking and using as much as possible. Um, most of our food scraps end up being, and I'm staring at my pile of coffee grinds and tea leaves, um, orange peels this time of the year, because I, I order um, some fresh oranges uh, from a farm in California around this time. And like, I don't have a lot of other scraps. Um, most of the apples that we had gotten, oh, so many apples this past fall, and I, I thought this this would be enough to like hold us over to, through the spring, but I totally underestimated that. I definitely need to like triple the amount of apples um, next year. However, we won't be sharing our apples with the pigs next year, so maybe I don't have to um, get as many. But um, but the the apples um, I'll save the apple cores af after we um, snack on them, and the pigs get those. However, um, apple seeds have cyanide in them, so you don't want to give them a high volume of cyanide. So they get like maybe a handful of apple cores each week. Um, I typically don't peel the apples unless there's a certain recipe that I'm making, but if I do, then, um, then they would get the peels from that. Um, so that there really, there really isn't a lot to compost other than eggshells, coffee grinds, and tea leaves, and the citrus peels. Um, I had a batch of cookies that I made the other night and I accidentally poured too much baking powder into them and the, the dough tasted totally fine. It tasted really good actually, but once I baked it, it had a horrible metallic taste and, you know, a friend is like, you could probably just give the cookies to the pigs, um, but um, pigs really can't have um, high volumes of salt and I don't really know what a high volume would be, but given that baking powder as the sodium base. Um, I didn't want to give that to them, so that just went in the compost, but we really don't have a huge volume of um, kitchen scraps um, on a regular basis. Anything that we do have goes out to the compost in the garden, um, and I try to primarily conserve um, leafy greens um, and the um, the coffee grounds for our worm bin. Some other things that I also collect and just kind of repurpose and, and use for the pigs, um, if I'm steaming broccoli or green beans, um, all that water that's left over, um, kind of like a broccoli broth in a way, that I'll put aside and you know typically I might add that to sauces or soups, but instead I'll just give it to give it to the pigs with their dinner. Um, when uh, I've got mushrooms from the farmer's market, all of those stems um, and the little nubs, I save those and I'll make a broth out of that for our own cooking purposes. And then all of the remnants I put into their dinner. Um, sometimes I'll just grab a handful of herbs um, as I'm getting their food because we've got some lemon balm and rosemary growing right near um, where I've got their feed bins and just throw some herbs, uh, excuse, excuse me, some herbs into their um, meals. So they get a, a pretty good variety. One of the other things I've been giving the pigs more recently is fresh yogurt. I've been making my own yogurt um, for the past few weeks. I'm going to link to the video. Um, I'm sorry, not the video, the, um, the blog post where I learned this from, but I discovered it through Instagram from another account and it's made in the crock pot and it and it's amazing it just like it, grow, it just makes such great yogurt um and i use this actually what i'm about to do um too um is i'll put it in our, our dog kong and put it in the freezer and then if we need to go out he's got a great froyo treat for himself checking on my seedling trays i have just some brassicas onions um some salad greens starting um, but what i wanted to show you these are our first meat birds i might do a separate rundown on these because um, i have a lot to say about our experience ordering chicks through the mail at the end of january they just arrived a few days ago and then we have some new layers that we're adding in. So I had ordered, I'll just briefly share, I ordered six salmon favorels, which is a breed, this little 
blonde one. Um, it's a breed we really, really love and it's um, that we really can't find them locally anymore. So I wanted to, um, to order them because I saw they were available by mail. And these are Murray McMurray's Big Red Broilers. Um, so they mature in three months. Um, so um, they were just hatched the last week of January. Um, and then we're planning uh, actually four months, I believe, because they'll, they'll be processed the end of uh, April. To give you a little peek into what the salmon favorels look like as adults, that is Princess Cardamom, our very original salmon favorel. And she and Pepper there are best buds. And we also have um, Duchess here and Lady Cardamom here. And there goes uh, Princess. And Princess is actually darker. Allegedly, the roosters are redder, and she actually crows, but she lays eggs. Weird. You're such a good boy. Yeah. 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 some good activity at all of the hives. I check my notes. Yeah. And as you can see here, Queen Gloria has a lovely population here, beautiful pollen. Um, this frame is just glorious, so much nectar. I love when they're this relaxed, so nice. All right, I just wrapped up inspecting my tallest colony. So this, this one was a little antsy. <laughs> um, the this now top box had been the bottom and it was totally empty so i moved it to the top and i saw the queen in um the second frame i pulled out of this box and then when i inspected this box i found queen cups they don't have eggs in them yet but i really feel like i should have split it when i found her but maybe next time I pulled one frame up with honey up to the top, so that'll encourage them to come up there. So I hope that distracts her from wanting to swarm. And I removed that empty medium on the top because their population size is just super fantastic. I don't think they need that extra space. Right now, I did find four small hive beetles in here. Not happy about that at this time of the year, but looks good otherwise. Making a little snack, post hive inspection snack. Is it a little silly that I'm eating honey after the inspection? <laughs> but um, this is actually, I had this teeny little one ounce jar there. I had, thanks to um, someone who commented, um, they had suggested, I have a video about this magnificent um, tea olive tree. I'm just gonna set this down right here. Um, excuse the, uh, the little messed up perspective there for a second, but I have this magnificent tea olive tree I have another video about, and someone commented and suggested that I infuse the flowers in honey, and it is amazing. So I'm really looking forward to next fall when um, the tree blooms again, but this is the last of it, and it is fantastic. This is the other project I wanted to show you. I'm tapping a few maple trees and take a peek in the bucket. There is a smidgen of sap in here. Last year I collected almost two gallons of sap. It was really great. Um, the weather was better a few weeks ago, but I'm doing it now. All right, back to the pigs. So in earlier videos, you may have seen about the pigs um, they started here in this little area and then we rotated them all the way through the backyard and close to the chickens and then they kept going we had them cross the creek and then we rotated them up through the woods and they got to go through the back field which was a great time for them down here and now they're hanging out here and we have about two or three more rotations um, before they head out. Hey boys. Hello. Hey. 
all the attention he loves belly rubs and bum rubs and he just would love this all day fred will like a little bit of attention but he is quite a loner and totally content going over that way but they get little massages and they get to hang out in the sunshine and just have a really good happy little life here while we have them keep the pig feed in these bins and they hold almost 150 pounds. Um, these bee frames can't go in the freezer because the rest of the pig feed is in the freezer right now. I also have diatomaceous earth, um, but I give the, the pigs um, four to five scoops each right now, which is about um, four to five pounds each, and they get a half a cup of diatomaceous earth. Um, the diatomaceous earth is to help prevent any worming issues. You can see all these trees around here. We've got a lot of oaks and hickory. So when the, be when the pigs were rotating through, they got a lot of that. You can kind of see where I had put a little bit of their feed here. So that kind of helps me distract them so I can get over to their feed bowls and fill them up. Um, and take a closer look here these are some beautiful hickory trees so you can hear them crunching on the nuts at all hours of the day it's kind of funny at night if you're walking around you just can't really see them in the dark but you hear them crunching um, so they've been enjoying all those nuts that they find that the squirrels may have left and loving life thanks for coming along to see uh, what the pigs eat in a day and taking a look in the hives and um, if you have not already, um, please subscribe. I also have a blog, so if you're interested in uh, reading more about these similar topics, um, you can check out taralyntoday.substack.com. I'm also linking to that in the description and as well as my Instagram. So uh, take a look at those and I will share one more next time.